Good evening, Godhood gang. Yes, it's that time. The moon, the full moon, is up in the sky and I am exhausted and that can only mean one thing. It is time for a full moon update with our, uh, our game Godhood. Hi everybody, I'm Rick. I am uh, a game developer at Abbey Games and my life's crazy. I'm here with Yoni. Another developer and uh, my stream producer for today, and uh, as we do every month uh, on the Wednesday before the full moon, we're going to be uh, playing Godhood, our strategy god game that we're developing over here at Abbey Games, uh, and looking at all the cool new stuff that we've been building in the past month. And important to note, this is also the final pre-release full moon update that we'll be doing because in about a month on July the 10th Godhood is entering early access on Steam and good old games uh, hello to everybody in the chat um, I think we're just gonna get started as we do every time we're going to be creating a new god and starting a new game um, by the way Yoni is going to be looking at questions in the chat so um, He'll be yelling them over to me while we play. So if you have any questions, be sure to let us know. Um, so, a really cool new thing in this update is that we have basically fully implemented four of the six commandments that we want to be doing, at least, you know, to start. And those are um, Lust, which we've seen a bunch of in the previous streams. Uh, chastity, which is completely new, and it's also the first time that we're, we've implemented that as well as Peace and War, which uh, we've played in streams previously. However, uh, we've now basically fully developed them uh, to the point that Peace was last game. So that means that every commandment has a unique class associated with it, uh, a unique god power that you can cast, and um, some other special benefits like a unique temple, um, some kind of unique building uh, for the chastity. You can build a bathhouse. Which is really cool. So, maybe we should start thinking about what kind of a god we want to make and build something based on that. I'm gonna press the randomize button a couple of times. We haven't had time yet, but that's another thing we're gonna be doing in the coming weeks. Is creating uh, more parts for us to customize our gods with. But for now we're going to have to be dealing with whatever these things are. I kind of like this one actually. Looks like some kind of... F-Zero character or something. Um, what are we thinking, Yoni? Any ideas how we should be addressed? Maybe the chat has got something. Hmm, it's some kind of a horse. Some kind of horse-faced god. That's an inside joke. Um, about the uh, the early access, if you actually take a look at the um, the update that went out on on uh, Kickstarter and our community forums today, in which I describe some of the new features of this um, update, I also go into um, uh, I, I basically there's a little list of some of the things that we're going to be doing uh, in the coming weeks until we get to the early access. So if you're curious, you can take a look, as well as um, uh, some of the things that we're going to be doing during the uh, during the early access period. So a little look ahead, Captain Horseman, which you know that is uh, Captain Horson, Captain Falco, Captain Fal. What is he called? Captain Falcon. Yeah, that's him. Kind of just like Captain Horse. Of course. No. So he's some sort of captain, so our religion could probably be something uh, a little bit like military sounding, maybe. Something strict sounding. Um, <laughs> the order of horrors. He has a very chaste religion. The Cavalry, I like that. That's good. The Cavalry. Thanks, chat. Or specifically, thanks, Azuark. What are our worshippers called? 
Um, riders? Yeah. Sure. Are we a god or a goddess? I think we are a god. Maybe some cooler arms. No, I like these. And our style is going to be... Uh, I'm going to go with light. Because I think we were a dark god last time. Let it be known. What, what, what does the new style? It doesn't do much. I mean, basically it changes the way that the world looks. So if you're a light god, your world is going to be a lot like brighter and nicer and shinier. And if you're a dark god, it's going to be a lot more like dark and brooding. For as long as there have been people to believe, there have been gods to vie for their attention. Captain Horse is one such god, destined to claim their place in humanity's heart and minds. They would start with a single soul destined to become the first prophet of the cavalry. I am Captain Horse. From nothing, Captain Horse appeared before Telhi. Telhi renounced their faith in the old god Quetzal Quetzalcoatl and placed it with Captain Horse instead. First, Captain Horse taught Telhi about what is right. In my name you will spread. And uh, as we know, every game of Godhood starts with you selecting your first God commandment, which is um, one of the t like important uh, truths of your faith. Uh, as you progress the game, you might unlock a second God commandment. Let me put my face down here. Um, and this, uh, there's some new feedback here as well, just explaining, telling you a little bit what that you know commandment is going to have for you like war your followers will prove their faith in you through blood and victory um yeah so what do we feel chat war peace lust chastity uh chastity like i said is completely new uh whereas war and peace have a bunch of new stuff in them such as a new unique class um with war we will get the reaver i believe We've got this, they've got this like big uh, sort of hook blade. For peace, we have the ambassador, who is a master at convincing people to join your faith peacefully. For chast chastity, we get the uh, aesthetic, who um, is all about like shaming your opponents uh, because they're so unclean. And for lust, as we saw in the previous stream, is the lust priest, who is all about. Um, seducing people into joining your religion. Please be chaste. Chastity. Alright, let's shame some non-horse folks. Purity starts with a clean body and mind. Your worshippers purge their sins through cleansing and abstinence. And uh, let's see, we'll, we'll unlock the purity resource, which is a unique resource for chastity uh, religions. And the uh, inspired temple of chastity, where we can uh, perform baptisms. Uh, which increase a disciple's health and devotion. Okay, cool. Let's do it. I believe chastity religions also um, have a lot of like good healing abilities and such. The elders who worshipped the ancestors thought this idea to be boring. That sounds unexciting. They could not see how they were how we were wrong to uh, in, how they were wrong in opposing Captain Horse. We're gonna have ourselves a sacrament. This one's a little bit different from the previous version. It's just Telhi trying to prove the truth of Captain Horse against three stubborn elders. Yeah, not so much. Didn't really see that going well, did we? However, Telhi has gained some uh, experience points. And um, what those do is also slightly different in this build. Um, actually a lot different, but I, I'm sure we'll, we'll see as we go. The elders were resolute in their judgment. Telhi and a few followers were banished from the old city. One day, Captain Horse will return. Uh, yeah, yeah. We Captain Horse spoke, and it shall be our holy site where we will found a new religion. Let's take a look at that holy site. Ooh, what's this then? One major thing that we've uh, improved in our current build of the game is the introduction. So every time that you start a new game, you're basically going to be starting with this, there's Telhi, and we only really have one thing that we can do, uh, which is our first uh, God power, the command job. Choose a disciple to perform a job. So we're going to be picking Telhi. And then uh, sadly, this we'll be fixing this soon, but the text is kind of interfering here. Uh, but yeah, we've, we've selected Telhi and now we're going to be telling uh, her 
what job we would like to do, which is uh, she's going to go over here and raise her faith in us. Starting the Age of Dark, and there are our little followers coming in. <coughs> and uh, while she's basically going to start doing her thing, we can uh, basically continue the game and see how things progress. There's nothing else we can really do um, for right now, because we've just got this little prayer center where some of our worshippers are milling about. However, there she goes. After a number of days, the first riders had settled in. Ocelot and Neca, two of Telhi's closest allies, had shown a lot of promise, and Telhi named them their first disciples. Bless those who devote their lives to the cavalry. Telhi spoke. If we want to spread the cavalry, grow our village, and convince our elders and the peoples of the world of Captain Horse's glory, we need to go out there and show them that we are right through holy sacraments. Your disciples are ready to travel and spread your glory. Uh, so we gain the God action world map. So there it is. That's our new God action, which is going to the world map. And um, those of you that are paying a lot of ten uh, a lot of attention during the streams will notice that the uh, UI has received, or the, the HUD here has received quite an overhaul. So let's go to the world map and start a mission. Um, up here we've got the uh, the <coughs> old city with the elders. However, to get there we first need to be a first gathering, a level 2 religion. We are currently only a personal belief, which is a level 1 religion. So we're basically going to need to level up. If you look at the top right here, we're going to be doing that by attracting more riders or worshippers to our uh, religion. And the main way to do that is obviously to go convert some people through the sacraments. We can go left or right. Left is slightly easier. A bunch of rage prophets, though. I'm gonna go right. I think we got this. So, Telhi is uh, our sort of like uh, our first disciple. And she also has the, uh, the new class. She is an aesthetic. Um, there it is. A divine class, which means that uh, they can cast a lot of divine abilities, uh, taking care of some people's uh, uh, weaknesses. And she's got the cleanse ability a bunch of different times, which deals morale damage with her devotion stat and decreases morale accuracy for one turn. It's pretty useful, especially against uh, enemies that are using a lot of morale attacks. And she's got purge, which deals dark physical damage based on her health stat. So that's pretty cool, pretty unique. Her health stat isn't super high, so it would probably be better if she just cleansed, because she's got quite a good charisma. Let's see how that goes. At this point, we haven't been able to do a lot of like leveling or customizing yet, so let's hope this goes well. There goes Telhi. You will cleanse your soul. Oh, waters heal, says Ocelot. Um, the uh, ability icons for the aesthetic are still placeholder, so they're all the same icon. Oh boy, that wasn't a great round, honestly. I'm a little scared of this druid. Nice, Ocelot. Rebuke that. I don't think we're going to... Uh, wow! That purge ability, that big physical dark hit, uh, since... Uh, the druid is a nature uh, character, and uh, nature is weak to darkness. Yeah, we got this. I think our disciples have quite a high devotion stat. Your sins are washed. Nice telly, you show them. These godless sinners. Um, Shad Orb, Shad Orb in the chat asks how many commandments will be available. Um, for the early access release in a month, we will be having the four commandments that are currently in the game uh, available. So that's War, Peace, uh, Lust, and Chastity. And the two other ones that are di directly on our planning, and we've also made a bunch of content. Oh, we won, nice. Um, we've already made a bunch of content for are uh, Greed and uh, Generosity. 
And from there, we're basically going to be seeing what else we can do. So we're definitely thinking of adding one uh, for Eldritch God stuff, but we might be implementing that in a different manner also. It sort of depends on where it fits best, um, allowing you to be a Cthulhu basically. And yeah, we, I mean, there's a ton of different ideas that you could have about commandments to build. Um, and yeah, we're going to be, we're going to keep developing Godhood well after we do a full release. Uh, so who knows how many more commandments we're going to add. We have a lot of cool ideas anyway. Uh, so four for the early access, six uh, as soon after as we can, basically. And then we'll see from there. Oh, um, you can... Well, you get one at the start, and if you level up uh, enough, you can get to pick a second commandment. So you can sort of mix and match uh, the different commandments that way, and also the classes that they unlock as well. Uh, however, the game... Basically, the game structure right now doesn't quite support that. So, uh, but that's what we're building right now. So in a month, uh, when the game goes out on early access, you'll be able to get up to two commandments in a single playthrough. And uh, who knows, maybe when the game grows, you know, there's space to even get a third one. We'll have to see. Um, Telhi, as you see, gained enough experience points to become Miracle Charged. So in previous builds, your characters would gain XP and they would level up. Uh, that is no longer the case. Instead, they gain a Miracle Charge. And uh, this will allow them to perform a single Miracle, and uh, which increases their stats a bunch. And uh, that also sort of uh, allows them to unlock a bunch of new abilities and things like that, which we'll see in a bit. Um, so the number that we show here, the three, the one and the one, instead is sort of your character's power level. So Telly, as we can see, is a, is a sort of power three character. And as we uh, put her in sacraments and give her miracle charges and uh, tell her to perform miracles, her power level is going to increase and she's going to learn new abilities and such. Let's see. We're only 10 away from uh, leveling up our god level. And we got some score points. And if you'll remember, the game is uh, running on a... Oh, hey. I'll hold that thought. Like a miracle, the sacrament has filled your disciples with complete faith in you. And they feel like they could make anything happen. To feel even closer to you, your disciples want to build a new holy place. But which should they construct? So, because um, Telhi uh, got her miracle charge, we are now able to construct uh, some places to perform miracles at. Which is what these new uh, god actions are for. Construct building. So now we get to pick. So, as you can tell from the based on the previous stream, uh, we've sort of decided to open up the system a bit and give you sort of more freedom of expression and of choices about uh, what you want to build and how you want your uh, religion to uh, grow and develop. Right now we can uh, develop the uh, miracle uh, blessing, the revelation, the farm or the herder. And the there are more options available to us than just these four, but depending on which commandment you pick, you'll actually be given different options here. So. Uh, I believe if you are war, instead of the herder, you might get the hunter as an available uh, uh, place to, to construct in your holy site. So what are we thinking, gang? We are a uh, chaste religion. We care about like cleanliness and of spirit and of body. Pretty soon we'll be bathing a lot, I think. Hmm. God of Anthe. <laughs> Miracle. I'm thinking either the Revelation, which is going to increase our knowledge, which is good for morale defense, or Blessing, which increases devotion, also morale defense. Oh, yeah, there's certain morale attacks that are good with knowledge. Hmm. Basically, do we feel like praying, which is what this is, or do we feel like... Um, what was this again? Oh, meditating. Praying or meditating. I feel like meditating is more of a chase thing. So I'm going to place the Miracle Revelation. So I'm going to choose where to put that on our little holy site. Um, let's put it over here. A little bit close by the center. Yeah, people can meditate a little bit. And you see we've gained a new God power, which is the Inspire Miracle. 
uh, power. But we can build another building, so let's do that first. Um, let's get a physical one in, just in case. Uh, Might or the herder, which mostly raises health. Uh, Tell he had that ability that scaled off health, uh, her uh, purging ability. So maybe we want to make the herder. Um, so we can increase our health. Also, it's gonna be able to. I'm gonna be able to show off something cool here. Let's make the herder over in this big field here. And there it is, folks. Yes, we've got llamas. An important new development feature. Um, so now that we can inspire miracles, let's see how we do that. We can only select Telhi because they are the only person currently that's miracle charged. Um, our other two characters could do that, but for that they would have to perform some more uh, sacraments. So we could either have her go to the Miracle Revelation or the Herder Miracle. So increase her health or her knowledge stat. Um, I'm going to go with health. That perch ability <laughs> was quite powerful. Let's see if we can make it even more so. So there she goes. We're still going to be adding a couple of uh, cool effects there to go with the uh, the costing of your god power. Several god powers in the game already have a cool uh, effect. That one just doesn't. And let's go ahead and assign Ocelot and Neca to the prayer site. Because if they complete that, then they'll um, their faith will increase a little bit. This is new also. Got some new UI going. Let's see how Telly's doing. She's tending to the... She's sort of praying to llamas, which I guess is cool. She's talking about llamas. Uh, let's see, Neca is done. I'm gonna have her do nothing. Let's uh, look at Ocelot and Telly completing their tasks. Telhi found the herders distraught. A few of their flock were missing for days. Telhi prayed to Captain Horse, who commanded Telhi to go into the forest. When Telhi returned, a whole new flock full of younglings was following her. Captain Horse truly has chosen Telhi to do great things. Of course, Captain Horse would be... Oh, here we go. Because Telhi performed a miracle, she has gained a disciple level, essentially. The miracle is going to increase her stats a bunch. Plus two health, plus one devotion. We know all this stuff. But also, she has gained a new ability, which is Purge. Let me see if I can move myself here. The Purge ability. So that's going to be added to her current mind, which is her you know, list of abilities that she can perform in the sacrament. Uh, it's a little bit a bummer that they have the same icon, but you know. Now she can perform Purge two out of five times and cleanse three out of five times. So that's pretty good. As we saw in the previous battle, Purge was pretty powerful. And we now also get to pick a passive ability. We can either give her some health or some devotion. I mean, health is what she uses to purge, and she just got that, so let's do it. Blessed be Telhi. Cool. All right. Um, let's get those last 10 followers so we can uh, level up and see some more cool stuff. Let's try these guys. Three Rage Prophets. Ancestral is weak versus divine. And I don't think we have any divine abilities right now. Yeah, we just have dark abilities. So, which are uh, Telhi's purges. We should be okay. It's actually kind of interesting. So, um, about those disciple levels. Disciples now level automatically, as you saw. And they level based on their sort of potential. So every disciple has a potential uh, development that they can that they can go through. And um, so certain disciples, you know, will might start a little bit stronger, but they don't have a lot of growth potential. So they might, you know, they'll level up, you'll teach them abilities, but they simply won't like learn a lot of cool new abilities the way to tell he just did. Um, this is different from our previous build, in which you could simply select, you know, the abilities that you wanted to teach your uh, disciples. Ooh, this is a much tougher fight. And why this is interesting... Okay, nice debug name. 
Yeah, we got this. And why this is interesting is um, because of the the uh, coming of age, the moment that we gain new acolytes for our religion, which we'll be showing off in a minute, I think. Ocelot and Neca have uh, basically gained their first level up, at which point they can unlock a class. Hmm. Every disciple has a spirit. Uh, this used to be called a talent, I believe, but we decided to go with a much more fun little thing where they uh, have a spirit of something. So, uh, Ocelot here has the dog spirit, which means that his might uh, is good, which means that his might stat will just automatically increase as he levels up. And he has a knack for ancestral. He has a chance to follow up an ally's ancestral ability. So if we have another ally that uh, performs an ancestral ability, uh, Ocelot, the dog spirit, has a chance of just jumping in after them. Um, so we probably want to pick something that keys off might. So that would be the chieftain or the rage prophet. I'm kind of leaning chieftain because we... I mean, rage prophet could be kind of cool. I'm trying to think of like in the in the um, uh, uh, in the chastity religion, what would work better, a rage prophet or a chieftain? Chieftain also has some morale attack, so I think I'm going to go with that. Yeah, and then Neca also levels up. Neca has the dove spirit, which means her devotion uh, uh, like levels up more than other stats, and she has a knack for divine. Um, so we could make her an aesthetic as well. Um, also fun to see the aesthetic has a, a passive ability, Washing Ritual. Whenever an opponent uses a weird or lust ability, the aesthetic has a chance to heal all allies and raise religion HP. So if you see something weird or gross happening, she might just start feverishly washing everyone and purging them and uh, healing their, uh, uh, their uh, HP a little bit. We could also have her be a, a smite sword. Divine, devotion, and might. Devotion's pretty good. Another aesthetic might be cool too, though. Just to really lean into the theme. Now, I'm gonna make a smite sword, because the smite sword is also all about, like, uh, striking down unbelievers and things, and I think that fits our religion quite well. They are also miracle charged, so that means that we can have them perform a miracle. Let's see. Hey, and we leveled up. And up we go. We've gathered 40 riders, which means that our follower support has increased to 22. What does that mean, Rick, you ask? Well, we'll see in a bit. We'll see when we get to the coming of age, specifically. Okay, let's... Um... Huh. So... I would love to teach, uh, have Ocelot and Neca perform a miracle. However, it costs 25 offerings to perform a miracle and we currently only have zero. So to get more offerings, we're going to have to go level up again to inspire the offer stockpile, which is a place where the cavalry can gather offerings. So as you see, we've sort of like um, been, you know, puzzling out where to put the uh, the uh, progression of the game like what are your goals gonna be and right now the main thing you want to do is increase your god level which you do by gaining more followers uh, we're also going to be getting a uh, statue dedicated to chastity uh, when we level up we need another 20 so let's just go do that go to the right here to collect 10 over here we get a relic and we will collect 10 We've got a weaver over here, a chieftain over there. Let's go over to the weaver. Oh boy, Telly and Ocelot are recovering right now, so they can't go. So actually, let's inspire everybody. Just to chill out at our little prayer site. Increase their faith a little bit. The higher their faith, the better they'll be in uh, performing tasks and in uh, sacramental combat. So it's not a bad thing to do. There they go. And they are good to go again. Basically, they'll just recover health, you know, as time progresses. So let's go over here. Uh, 
dark, ancestral. I think we'll be okay. Yes. Weak versus life. This uh, godless weaver over here. We don't have any uh, any disciples with life abilities. Let's see how this goes. NECA and Ocelot have grown a lot more powerful since they uh, we picked a class for them. We cleanse your soul. Robin HS in chats asks, are we ever going to be able to see how high that chance is, or is it supposed to be vague? Ooh, wow. Ocelot, critical hit. And I think uh, that is referring to uh, disciples leveling. Um, and you, yeah, you do actually get a chance to show that. I can actually show it after the, uh, uh, the uh, sacrament here. another 10 and we get a relic basically um, oh, I'll show in a, I'll, I'll get back to the question in a minute uh, but first let's bless a relic we can either have it be a divine relic um, or an ancestral relic ancestral relics do cool things with devotees Wow thanks for the uh, <laughs> th thanks for the, the good text good flavor text out of the end um, we don't have devotees yet, but let's have Telhi, you know, bless a relic. What it's gonna be? A godstone. Plus five religion HP. That's quite nice. And that's a global relic, so we don't have to do anything with it. Just owning the godstone is gonna increase our religion HP, which is the uh, our, our HP bar that we use during the sacrament. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, going back to that question. Over here, next to a character spirit, we'll see their star ratings for abilities and passives. And the higher their rating means that they are uh, better suited to learning um, either like active abilities, so those are like these sorts of abilities that you cast during a sacrament, or passive abilities, um, which are you know stuff like divine soul here, chance to follow up an ally's divine ability, things like that. And yeah, so it's sort of up to you to decide what you think is more important. Uh, active abilities can be really good, but there are some really <laughs> powerful passive abilities in the game as well. If we look at Ocelot here, for example, not a very high rating when it comes to passive abilities. You know, averagely good on active. So we're going to be seeing him learn like probably more of these sorts of abilities and less passives like Leader's Charge, for example. Um... Bonus morale, what is... Alright. Whenever a chieftain uses a rally attack. We don't have that yet. Alright, cool. Um, we're almost level up, and we... Everybody's totally fine from that previous sacrament, so... Let's just keep going. They don't, we don't have to spend time recovering on this one. And once we get that offering stockpile, we'll be able to do a bunch of stuff with that. You also notice that um, because uh, Ocelot and Neca are already miracle charged, they cannot gain more XP to basically work on their next miracle charge. So we're going to have to be basically uh, gathering offerings to inspire them to perform another miracle before... Wow, Telly. Filth! Uh, before uh, the sacraments are going to be actively helping them develop. Nice. Is there a question? Oh, let me read the chat real quick. What thing with the passive ability? The chance to do something. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, every passive has uh, one of three ratings of trigger chance. Um, so we're like half fake when it comes to that. A passive ability can either be rare, in which case it hardly ever occurs. It can be. Um, 
forget exactly what they're called from the top of my head, but they can either be rare, which means that it hardly ever happens, um, like common, which means that it happens quite often, um, and there's one more. I'll take a look at the passive abilities, and maybe it's there. For now, we've leveled up, which means that we can now get the uh, offering stockpile, we've got more follower support, and we've gained a dedication statue to Chastity. Let's take a look at some of these passives. Yeah, so this trigger says always. That was the third one I forgot. Uh, always abilities will always happen when the trigger occurs. It'll just do it. Uh, this trigger is oddity, which is a bad term, but you know, it gets the point across. Which means that it will sometimes trigger when a disciple's faith is high. So, your disciple's faith play a big part in uh, trigger chance. A rare trigger. Uh, you know, it doesn't happen that often when a disciple is neutral faith, or it will basically never happen if a disciple is low faith, but if your disciple is really high faith, uh, which we can see over here, then uh, it actually has like a pretty good chance of occurring, even though it is a rare ability. Hey, we got two new god actions. The offering stockpile and dedicating a statue. Let's start with the offering stockpile. I'm gonna put that probably close to the herder. Looks nice. And uh, we can have our disciples uh, collect offerings here. We're going to be needing 25 in order to inspire Ocelot and Neca to uh, uh, perform an ability. And let's also see about dedicating a statue. We can place it either on the herder or with our little meditation site here. Hmm, I think it'll look nicer on our meditation site. But we are a horse god, so it should probably be with the herder. Alright, let's put it on the herder. All miracles in the district, so all the herder miracles, will be improved with plus one devotion and plus one might. Cool, let's do it. The manifestation of chastity. So, we're going to be picking a statue. See over here? That we're going to be placing with the herder. That is going to be our sort of physical manifestation of what chastity looks like to our worshippers. And they're going to be praying to it and stuff. Um, what do you think? As you might notice, there's a bunch of new statues that Carmen and uh, Marlies have been drawing. We've got the Water of Chastity, the Goldfish of Chastity, the Bird, the Kickstarter of Chastity. How about the Tentacle of Chastity? That doesn't sound good at all. The Rivalo, yeah, here we got Rivalo of Chastity. The Clicky, which is just your little cursor. I kind of, I'm th I like water, maybe bird. You don't really have a horse, but it's okay. <laughs> I like Tentacle of Chastity. The Tentacle of Chastity. We can even rename it if we want to. Water sounds good, yeah. I'm gonna go, even though two people said tentacle, the one person that says water, I'm gonna go with them, I think. I'm gonna call it the uh, the wave of chastity. Inspired a wave of chastity. There it is. Looks pretty cool. Doesn't really fit our whole herder. It might have looked a little bit better over here, but you know, that's, that's where it is. Um, so probably we want to try and have Ocelot or Neca gain the herder miracle so that they can gain the full advantage of our cool new dedicated statue uh, and to do that we're going to need some offerings so let's inspire everybody to go collect some offerings there they go so depending on their faith they'll also like perform tasks faster as you can see Neca here her bar is like a lot fuller than Ocelot's already yeah. okay they want tacos that much is clear. 28 offerings, that's enough to uh, get one miracle charge in. So let's get Neca and inspire her to perform the Herder miracle. I probably could have told Tally to do something. Oh well. Let's see. Yes. Let me see. I'll, I'll read the question, it's cool. Does this, system, does this game have a system like Rose? I mean, achievements allow the player to increase possibilities for the next game. Um, 
we considered doing this, but because we want the game to be about um, expressing your religion, you know, we, we don't want to hide options for the player to be able to do that um, behind, you know, an unlock. So that is why um, we've basically decided to unlock everything from the get-go. Um, however, we do, you know, challenge you to get the best uh, score you can during a playthrough to try different strategies and to build different sorts of religions. So we hope that the game has plenty of replay value uh, purely on that note. Um, let's see if we can keep leveling up. We need another 20. Uh, hmm, we don't have enough disciples. So let's gather some more offerings. Basically at this point I'm just gonna try and play the game at a little bit higher pace than I have been up till now. So we can uh, see some of the other new things that are in the game. Mainly I want to get to a, uh, a, uh, a coming of age. In which we get to pick new disciples. Uh, on the current build, so the build I'm playing right now, which is super work in progress of course. Um, you could probably get like an hour or two, three in. Um, However, our goal for the early access, so in a month, is about 10 hours of a playthrough. As the game grows, you know, during early access and beyond early access as well, uh, you know, the world is going to become bigger and there's going to be more for you to do. And so the game time is just going to increase. So 10 hours is just our first goal uh, for, you know, our first early access version, basically. Uh, Neka also performed a cool miracle where she went into the forest and got a bunch of uh, younglings and uh, llamas back. Which I think is a... Yeah, that's the wondrous miracle. So that's actually really good. It's gonna increase her stats greatly. And as you can see, highlighted in green, plus two devotion and plus one might. That's from our uh, the wave of chastity that we introduced here. And she's gained the mercy ability. Deals massive physical damage that scales, scales well with might and might and devotion. Isn't that just perfect? It's almost like I planned it. Which I certainly didn't. Uh, I'm gonna wait for them to finish their offering rituals. There they are. Collecting offerings. Cool. Let's have uh, Ocelot... Mm. Yeah, let's have Ocelot perform the same miracle in the meantime. You two go gather some offerings. And then once Ocelot has uh, leveled up uh, and performed their miracle, we'll go back out there. <gasps> it's happening! As your people have settled in, a few of your younger riders have shown great devotion to the cavalry and have become acolytes of your faith. A few of these acolytes are now nearing adulthood, but which of them are worthy enough to become your disciple? So we now gain a new god action, which is called the Chosen, which is going to allow us to pick up new disciples, <laughs> which is super cool and exciting. All right. Oh, it's nice and misty today. Here it is. Inspire pilgrims from all of your domain to present themselves you'll be able to initiate new disciples from amongst them. Let's do that. So this is all going to be new. Um, basically, we're, you're going to be getting a random selection of new acolytes based on your sources. So um, all over the world map, basically, there are tribes and things that you can convert. And based on the tribes that you've converted, they'll be sending uh, acolytes over to your holy site for judgment, basically. So we can see here, we've got three acolytes. Uh, we've got Kuali from the fields, Ne from the village, and Oli from the bloodline of Telhi. So um, your disciples can also become sources for acolytes in the future. So uh, Oli basically had a kid, probably, or a nephew or something. Whatever the case, um, because Ollie is quite a powerful disciple, uh, they're also going to be generating new acolytes for us to uh, uh, to show. And those acolytes might even have like bonuses from their progenitors, from their bloodline, basically. So 
uh, our goal for the game, this build doesn't quite support it yet, but our goal of the game is that there's going to be really strong... Uh, yeah, Telly, what did you what did you do? Yeah. Uh, Telly, you're, you weren't supposed to have kids, you know? Chastity. Um, but yeah, the goal for the game is that eventually there'll be like really strong generational gameplay where you're slowly building these, these bloodlines that are going to become more and more powerful. In addition to finding new sources of uh, disciples. So Acolytes have a rarity now. As you can see, Neh here, with the gray glow and the gray like particle effects coming off, is a common Acolyte. Not that exciting. Let's click on her. There we go. She's got the, or yeah, it's a, it's a he, I think. Got the pig spirit. Two stars on uh, abilities, two on passives. And pig has a knack for life uh, abilities. We don't have that yet, so that could be cool. Let's see what Kuali's got from the fields. Boom! Ooh, much better. This is the Lynx Spirit, which scales well on Might and Cunning. And they have the Life Soul, Chance to Follow Up an Ally's Life Ability. Quite awesome. Um, two on passives and three on, or three on passives, two on abilities. Quite good. And last we have Ollie from the Bloodline of Telhi. The Flamingo Spirit, wow! It's a three and a three. And because uh, they are of the bloodline of the prophet, um, you know, Telhi, our prophet, uh, Oli has a uh, higher faith, just always. Because, you know, Telhi has done a good job of teaching them about us. Flamingo has a, wow, a lot of stat gain. Knowledge, decent. Charisma, decent. And cunning, good. And a plus 10 morale crit chance. So, bigger chance of scoring critical hits on morale attacks. And in addition to that, lots of potential when it comes to uh, leveling up. So that's cool. These are our three new Acolytes. And now it's up to us to decide which we want to take on as Disciples. And this is where uh, this number comes in. This is effectively our budget. The, uh, basically our, our, I forget the official term for it right now. But basically our budget for uh, disciples that our religion can hold. Um, devotion. That's well, devotion is already used somewhere else, so we might we know we might name it something different. But essentially, if you can look, tell he's seven plus three is ten plus two from Neca is twelve total. That's the uh, disciple budget that we're using up right now. And as our disciples level up and develop, they will actually increase the amount of budget that they require as well. Um, over here we've got Oli, the Flamingo Spirit, who already requires 9. That's quite high, that's even higher than Telhi. And right now they're also weaker than Telhi, because Telhi has already been able to level up a little bit. However, uh, you know, Oli does have a really good potential for learning new abilities. Um, so it's up to us how we want to do this, you know? Let's, let's think about it. We got six slots, six places for uh, acolytes, so we could either get like. I think we could probably get both. That's like uh, 12, 12, and 12, 24. We could get either Oli or Kuali, and then we could also get Neh. Sorry? There isn't a tooltip. Is there? Oh, there it is. Follower support. Um, basically, yeah. And as you saw, when we level up uh, our god level, our follower support also increases, which means that um, we are able to both retain more powerful disciples and uh, hire on, or sort of like induct, uh, in, yeah, uh, take on uh, more powerful acolytes as well. I think I'm gonna go with Oli, the flamingo spirit. They seem quite good. Yeah, currently that's six is the maximum number. Um, you know, during the game we might consider like allowing you to uh, increase that number. Uh, but we found that the game can get kind of like overwhelming with more than six. So we'll have to see. Um, yes, if we press this beautiful programmer art button, it'll say send this disciple away forever to attract followers somewhere else. This frees up the slot and claimed follower support. So we could send Ocelot or Neca away if we wanted to. 
and uh, they will actually also generate resources for us. So when we send Ocelot away, they're going to be going off into the wilderness, you know, um, getting new, gathering resources and convincing people to join us. So um, when we send Ocelot away, we're going to be getting some worshippers and resources in return. Um, the higher, like, the higher power to your disciple is, the more stuff you'll get if you send them away. Um, let's see here. I mean, we could maybe, let's see. We've got four left, plus three, that's seven. That's just not enough to get Kuali in. So I was considering sending Ocelot away uh, so that we could get on Kuali. But it's just not gonna happen. Maybe after we level up. For now, I'll take on Ney. Sure, let's go, you're in. And Kuali is gonna stay there. So uh, until a while. I believe until the next uh, coming of age, which is in, which is in 15 days, uh, Kuali's gonna be there. So we got some time still. Let's uh, wait until the miracle. And there they are, Ollie. Hey. Ocelot found the herders distraught. A few of their flock were missing. Ocelot prayed to Captain Horse, who commanded him to burn a few incenses. So burn some incense. Miraculously, the missing part of the flock returned home. So it's not as good of a miracle. Um, less stat gain. But you know, Ollie still learned a new ability, Intimidates. Deal morale damage with both might and charisma. Quite cool. But I was kind of hoping for him to uh, learn a, uh, uh, a rally ability because his passive allows him to do stuff with that. Everybody's ready. I think it's time to go out onto the world map again. Let's go over here and get another uh, relic. Maybe we can even level up some of our newbies. Um, specifically Ollie with the high potential we should probably take along. And uh, Telhi, high power, should be good. Either Ocelot or Neca. Let's actually take a look at what, the, what we're facing here. A guardian and a songsmith. Two life. I believe life is weak against uh, nature. And I want to say... Oh, sadly, we can't see it here. Seems like something we can fix. Um, mm, let's bring Neca as well. Let's see. Resist Dark, but weak versus Ancestral. Since Ocelot has a lot of Ancestral abilities, that seems like uh, it's his job. And since they resist Dark, and uh, Telly's got those Purge abilities, which are Dark, I'm gonna not take Telly along this time. Instead, Oli and Neca are gonna bring up the rear. Let's see how this goes. A little bit tougher, probably. We have a lot of Religion HP. Uh, partially due to that relic we found earlier. Be free of disease, join us! Ah, cool. So, um... This godless over here actually has a new class that we haven't seen yet. Uh, this is a protector. And uh, as you saw from the start of the battle, the protector can cost a lot of, like, abilities that allow them to protect their allies, as they are showing off here doing a quite good job of it, in fact. Luckily, Ocelot is uh, quite powerful against life uh, uh, disciples, such as the Protector over here. Oh, it's not going too great. Ugh, it's too bad. Wow, damn, Neca. 15 damage. I don't even know what ability that was. I should have looked. Ollie is almost able to select a class and gain their first miracle charge. And we should have gotten a new relic. We only need 10 more to level up. Um, I think Ocelot did a pretty cool hit just now, so I think they get to bless this next relic. And because it's ancestral, it's probably going to be an ancestral relic as well. Let's see what that is. The Root of Health. Oh, cool. 
So this is a ritual relic. You can attach this to one of your rituals and all miracles performed there will also give plus one health. Seems quite good for a herder actually, since that already gives a bunch of health. Um, yeah, plus two health. We could just give that even more health. There we go. The root of health is now part of the herder miracle. Yeah, this herder is just decked out. Um, let's get another level up. Let's get another 10 followers. We're gonna get 50 here. Damn, should have gone here earlier. We're going to be facing our first enemy deity, Bountiful Tlaloc, who is a nature god. If you are well read in South American uh, folklore and myth, Tlaloc is a god of rain. Can't take Ollie with us. We'll bring Ney just in case. But hopefully, tell he. Weak versus dark, so tell he should be good here. Resist the vine. Sadly, Neka has a lot of the vine abilities, but we'll have to see how they do. We could hold them back in favor of Ne. Maybe see how Ne levels up, but Ne's got really low potential. So I mostly took them on just to have them gather some offerings for me. Probably should have instructed them to do so, but... Let's see how this goes. I should have probably saved the game. Oh well. Uh, new in this update also. Uh, some things to go against uh, safe, safe scumming. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. Damn, this is bad. I should not have put Neka in. Oh god. Telhi is also actually, a, even though Telhi has dark abilities, uh, they are a divine character. The uh, aesthetic is a divine character, so this is not a great matchup for me right now. With two divine characters against a bunch of nature. Good Telhi, but I don't think it's gonna, I don't think you're gonna make it. Our first taste of defeat. However, everybody's miracle charged off of that, so that's cool. Can increase their stats somewhat. But I think we're going to have to get some... Uh, get some new... Uh, some new people leveled up, honestly. So I'm gonna return to the city. Sadly, no new converts. Um... Only a nanny need to level up. And we need to give them a class that is powerful against nature. Let's work on that. Uh, this place is on cooldown, so we can't go there quite yet. The feedback on that is not great. Um, so, let's get some new miracles going. Ocelot is an ancestral character, so he would be good. Let's send you back to the herder. Ne, collect offerings. Tell he, you too. You can only have three uh, characters inspired in the current build. So I'm gonna go with these three. We've hit our first road uh, roadblock. Let's see how we do. gather some more offerings. So the thing that I want to, would really like to show you is to level up enough to be able to develop our chastity religion a bit more uh, to where we gain some of the unique god powers and such. Got another miracle. Just pumping out these herder miracles here since they give some might. It'd be good if we had some charisma but sadly we do not. Uh, I could give him some charisma some more might. I'm gonna go with Charisma uh, since uh, I've already their might's already 12 and the Charisma is a measly 4 since all these abilities give both Charisma and might bonuses it'd probably be best if we uh, spread out a little bit. Uh, Ocelot also learned a new ability Mighty Rally Morale Damage while increasing your Disciples Might and Charisma and it's an AoE ability so that's cool. Let's see. 
NECA, I could give NECA another miracle, but it's not super useful. I think NECA could actually get some more devotion, though. So let's do that. In the meantime, Ocelot, how about you gather some more offerings for me? Um, when one of these characters is done, I'm gonna send them out on the... Oh, no. Tell he grows gray. They say you are only as old as you feel. Well, tell he definitely feels very old. Having reached the ripe old age of 30, 43, tell he will have a little more trouble performing certain tasks from now on. Your disciples will uh, grow old and weaker, and eventually they will... Uh, they will also become elders unable to perform the sacraments. Neka uh, was meditating when Captain Horse spoke to her in a marvelous revelation. Captain Horse spoke about the nature of this world. Some writers were skeptic, but once Neka accurately predicted the weather, they bowed down in awe. Gives her some uh, knowledge. She's learned the smite ability, a divine physical hit with uh, that skills off might. So I'm gonna give her some more might. All right, let's head out on the, to the world map again. Oh, we can't yet. I mean, I could just go fight the elders. We're definitely going to lose, but I might get some XP, and that's cool. Hmm. How about you go, Neka? Let's get some XP. You know? Who knows? Maybe we get lucky. We won't get lucky. In the name of Captain Horse, wash yourself! You said it, Ne. Whoa. Oh god. Oh boy. Um, yeah, what you saw there was that they have a couple of passives that they were triggering off each other. So because one of them like performed a specific kind of ability, the other got to do an ability, etc, etc. Quite powerful. Only did level up, so that's uh, quite nice. Knowledge cunning. We need something that's powerful against uh, nature. Which I believe... Yeah, we really need to put that information just like in every one of these screens that has this uh, element here. We'll be getting to that before the early access, I think. Um, let's see. Right, so... Dark abilities are powerful against nature. So we could get a weaver. That seems good. Yeah, knowledge and charisma. Let's make Ollie a weaver. Let's teach them, uh, or let's get them uh, miracled up. Could I go again? I could just go again. Poor Ollie. Alright, I can't. I'm thinking of just doing that fight again, maybe. Um, in order to get Ne leveled up. Okay, Telhi. You need to get some morale defense, I think. Oh, actually. Let me pause. Get some more offerings while we're at it. And I think pretty soon we're gonna be in a place where we can maybe try those... Uh, those folks again. So, the world map right now is, uh, you know, not very big yet. It's not a lot of places to go. And because of that you can get in these situations. But one of the goals for Adrian in the next two weeks is going to be to uh, massively expand the content on the world map. So... The maddening revelation. The grandness of Captain Horse's knowledge almost drove mm. Telhi insane. With this insight, Telhi predicted the death of a rider. Everyone was completely in awe. We can either get some Mystica, which we can use to dedicate or put uh, 
relics onto rituals and such. Or give them the maddening revelation. Have Telly go just a little bit insane. But it's a really powerful miracle. Plus two charisma, plus one charisma. Or plus two knowledge, one charisma and one might. And they have uh, learned Purge again. That's really good. Because that's another dark ability. We definitely want to uh, get that on those uh, those nature characters. So a thing that's interesting about every character is they will actually have a tendency towards what type of abilities they like to learn. So uh, tell he has been learning the Purge ability an awful lot. But if we, uh, let's say if we make uh, Ney an aesthetic as well, there's just the chance that they have the tendency to learn a different aesthetic abilities than tell he does. And they might uh, end up as quite a different type of aesthetic uh, than tell he. Um, they are still broken, which means that they can't be in the sacrament. So I'm just gonna have to wait for them to become unbroken. Gather some offerings in the meantime. got another coming of age here oh no rare ones Akala from the bloodline of Tally duck spirit this kind of nice though she collects extra offerings we got another dove spirit good with divine and the, another cat spirit good with nature they should all be quite cheap mm, not cheap enough though could get rid of Nair, but Nair's already like leveled up a little bit. Koali is also still here, but I'm gonna have to level up before I can uh, initiate Koali. Okay, Oli and Nair are back on their feet. Let's try this. I hope this goes well. I'm gonna send in Telhi. You know, they've got dark abilities. They are weak against their, their nature skills, though. I'm not going to send in NECA this time. Let's hope Ollie can make the difference. Hmm. I'm considering not sending Telhi in, because they do take a ton of damage, and I don't really have any protective classes. So I think it's going to be up to Ne <laughs> to uh, make up the difference. Let's, uh, let's see. Going against the Rainmakers. is likely to jump in front of morale attacks. Extra move on your first turn. Yeah, okay. I think I think a defense character would be quite useful here. Maybe Neh probably needs to level up into becoming some sort of defensive character. Either a druid or a pr protector. I will can smell your impurity. Let's see how we do. That's, this hurts a lot. They also get to act first. <laughs> oh, already? Nah. Oh boy. I don't know about this, you guys. Cool. Effective. It's still only four damage. All these stats just aren't that high, I think. So, um, critical hit from Rainmaker. What you just saw is Ocelot has a uh, rally ability. This is not it. But when they cast that rally ability, they uh, get to perform a follow up, which is uh, the uh, passive ability that they learned earlier. There we are. Nature prevails. can at least get Nair a class. I think I'm gonna teach Nair to be a guardian. Seems good. We need a defensive character. Cause we got our asses handed to us there. Mm, no, it's not gonna go. Yeah, we've kind of hit a hit a wall here, my friends. A little bit too bad. And we kind of knew this problem existed in the current build. Uh, it very much has to do with the way that the uh, world map is laid out right now. So it's something that we're very aware of. And that we're uh, going to be fixing. 
ASAP. Um. Huh. Let's see. Let's give Ollie a miracle. Maybe the herder, maybe over here. Get some extra knowledge. Yeah, knowledge is uh, one of Ollie's uh, important stats. So I'm gonna send Ollie over there. As you saw, Ollie didn't do a lot of damage, even though the ability was effective against nature. And I think that's simply because, you know, he's just not that powerful yet. We're gonna have to be increasing his stats a bit. Ollie accurately predicted the flight of some birds. Well, you know, you get a miracle revelation. Not a great miracle, but good enough. Plus two knowledge. And a new ability, Condemn. Deals dark morale damage and has a charisma bonus. It's, uh, like more powerful than the uh, Doom we already have. It's basically a more powerful version. Um, ne can gain an ability. Let's send them over to the herder. Because health, which is the main stat that they can raise there, is quite uh, the defensive stat. There it now goes. Yeah, now gathered some... Gathered some... Uh, Alpacas. That's a lot of health and devotion. This is a great miracle for Ne. Shield Bash. So based on this ability, I'm gonna guess that Ne is sort of has a tendency towards learning more aggressive protector skills, which is as opposed to defensive ones. This is still a defensive ability, but not as defensive as some other ones. Just maybe not too good. Um could just fight these people just to level up a bit. Let's do it. Let's send in Ne. Let's send in Oli. Let's send in Ocelot. This is going to be my strike team for taking out the uh, the nature folks. So let's uh, have them gain some uh, some XP by losing horribly against my uh, my nemesis. I am ever vigilant. Cool. So Ne has a passive that uh, immediately on the, before the first turn, they uh, cost the wall ability, which increases their armor and the chances of blocking. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> they just really wiped the floor with me. But nothing unexpected. <laughs> um, cannot go on a uh, another sacrament, but we can have them. Actually, let's get some. Let's get my strike team's faith up. All this defeat does like lower their faith a little bit. If we take a look here, minus ten because they were uh, humiliated and broken in the sacrament. Um, plus 10 because they are the bloodline of the prophet. But if we uh, send them over here, maybe we can like raise their spirits a little bit. As you can see, raises faith a little. So let's try and get their faith up, recover from those defeats, and face, uh, face Tlaloc and his disciples. We're gonna gain a ton of, of uh, worshippers when we do. Oh, another thing that you just maybe saw pop up if you were paying attention is any um, disciples that aren't assigned right now, so I didn't uh, inspire, you know, Neka to do anything. But based on her faith, she will still go and perform little jobs around the uh, the holy site. We? Yes. Yeah, we have, haven't we? What's, what's the downside of 
Well, the downside of losing... You can just keep going. Well, you can just keep going. However, I'm covering it up with my face right now. But we are currently halfway into the Age of Dark. Uh, the game does run on a timer. Uh, we are currently in year 16. Um, season 1 out of 3. So we only have... Basically, the challenge of the game is to make the best religion, the biggest, most powerful religion you possibly can within, you know, uh, the uh, the time limit of the game, the age of mythology, as we say. At some point, the age of mythology will uh, pass, at which point, um, the uh, basically, you will ascend to the heavens, and uh, based on how well you've played, your uh, faith will take a permanent place in the world. Um, so, you know, there's two things going on here. For one, I am spending a lot of time just sort of grinding right now. And like I said, there are no alternatives. Uh, ideally, you know, on the map, there would be a different direction for me to go and work towards. But, you know, with our work in progress map, that it just isn't the case. Um, but yeah, I'm wasting time. And the second is, uh, we want to... One of our development goals for the early during the early access is uh, put a lot more emphasis on your disciples' faith. So have their uh, faith play a like a much bigger part in uh, the sacrament and also in um, managing faith outside of the sacrament. So in one of those games, uh, you know where our where we would like the game to be is that losing a whole bunch is obviously like very detrimental to your faith. And maybe at some point, you know, you just um, lose the game or end up in a place where you just can't progress uh, anymore. But like I said, ideally, there's always something for you to do on the world map that isn't just bashing your head on a single tile over and over again like we are doing right now. Let's see how this goes. We have all Ne is a protector right now. The previous time that Ned was in this fight, they were knocked out in like two, two hits. We cleanse your soul. Ah, that sucks. Ned did not get to cast uh, his wall ability. Come on, Ned. Yes. Block. Yes. Okay, this is looking a lot better already. Totem. Oh, that's too bad. That really hurts. Okay, Ned needs to keep blocking. Oh, not like that. This is still not looking great. They just have a lot of HP. Wow, Holly, you weakling. You do less damage than Neh, who is hitting them with a shield. I think Oli is just terrible. Maybe that's just it. I think I just blame Oli. Neh is doing a ton of damage. So much for Protector. MVP, honestly. I mean, we were a lot closer this time. I just don't think I have the right team composition to uh, to get this done. I think I need another darkness character, probably. Wow, this is sad. It's too bad. Mostly for the stream. I'm gonna cheat, folks. Let's do it. Ow. I'm going to win that encounter. So yeah, for the purposes of the stream, I'm going to be cheating a little bit here. <laughs> um, which I hope you'll uh, you'll forgive. Basically, I'm gonna assign some stuff for people to do, and when the encounter comes back from, uh, actually, I'm gonna double cheat. Screw that. Here we go, folks. Welcome to the debug menu. You'll never get to see this when you play the game. 
but I do. I'm gonna click world map cheats. I'm gonna go over to the world map. It's on cooldown, that's too bad. Five days. I'm gonna need to wait five days. I'm gonna speed it along a little bit. Two. And I'm gonna cheat basically so I can show you a little bit more content. Um, that you'll see when your uh, religion levels up further. The nightmare skill, that's cool. It's another uh, dark ability, but it's damage based, uh, damage based on knowledge instead of charisma. Which Ollie has a lot more of, so that's actually good. Let's give him even more knowledge. Um, I needed three more days, I believe. Two. Let's see. Okay. I'm gonna go over here, and I'm just gonna press a button that allows me to win. I think uh, Ollie and Ned definitely deserve to be there. Telly, you definitely don't. I'm gonna press this win button. <laughs> I'm so good at this game. There we go, we won! Wow. Imagine for a moment that that was a moment of glorious achievement. Uh, we've leveled up. I bet the chat is loving this. I'm not gonna look. And we can now construct another building. And our uh, follower support has increased to 30. So maybe we can actually... Uh, oh, <laughs> look at that. We've even leveled up to level 5. Which means that we can inspire the initiation ground, which gives us devotees. And we can dedicate another chastity statue. And we've increased this to 35. Pretty cool. All these bouncing icons. I can inspire the initiation ground, which is where we can get devotees. If you remember from previous streams, devotees can be used to upgrade facilities. I'm gonna dedicate this place now. I'm gonna put a... Hmm. For our backers in the chat, thank you for backing and for helping us unlock the Retnar dedication. <laughs> there he is, the Reddit God of Chastity. Inspire. <laughs> He's glorious. Um, uh, yeah. Here we have our, our list of buildings that we can still place. Let's make a farm, get some more health. Let's put the farm out by the, the side of the mountain. Looks nice. And um, next level is when we unlock the Temple of Chastity and, uh, the, and the Purity resource. So, if your religion levels up enough, eventually you'll, uh, you're able to sort of express your commandments even more uh, effectively. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing right now. I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going to be cheating again. Don't tell anyone at the Abbey that I did this. Don't tell Yoni. <laughs> there we go. Level up. I've given myself some followers. We are now a sect. And I can now inspire the Temple of Chastity. Uh, allows you to gain purity and perform the Baptism religious action. Which can increase a disciple's health, devotion and healing powers. Let's take a look. Let's throw ourselves a cool baptism. And let's maybe end the stream on that. So I'm going to inspire the Temple of Chastity. Um, where will I put it? Um, I think it needs to be close by our cool water building. There it is. This is all gonna need like some more cool like special effects popping up when you cast that power, of course. And we've gained a new god power, baptism. The man to disciple to wash the souls of your riders. The disciple will perform the baptism miracle, which raises health, devotion, and sometimes even healing powers. So we have a new resource, purity, which can be gained by having cool sermons over over here. Let's gain some purity. And do a, a baptism. Oh, only two people can be assigned there. That's okay. What are they talking about? Soap, I saw. Water. Plus 15 purity. 
And that should be another 10 or so. Plus 17. Oh, we've got enough to do this baptism. Whoa. It's a little blue still, but basically this is another one of our god powers. Who should we pick, chat? Who gets to be baptized? Should it be Ollie? Who has proven to be quite effective. Hey, you know, you gotta bathe. You gotta clean your body and rinse your soul. Should it be Telhi? Our aesthetic and our very first disciple. Miasmic says Maya my asmic says Ollie Ollie it is where are you there you there she is he is Ollie whoa that particle effect went a little bit too quickly still tweaking things he's gonna go over here I don't know that I've seen this uh, what this looks like yet I don't know that there's a cool animation just yet doesn't really look like it. He's just sort of waving his arms around. But basically, every um, uh, uh, every god power that you inspire someone to do... Oh god, Ollie just disappeared. Where did he go? How did he... <laughs> okay. Ollie just... Uh, <laughs> Ollie's over here now. He likes it better there. A little work in progress there, folks. Um... The uh, war and peace and lust uh, god actions are a lot like better organized at this point. The baptism performed by Ollie washed the sins of rioters. A miraculous happening was when a diseased woman came out of the water, cured from her ailments. Add cleansing baptism to this disciples performed miracles, and adds the healing touch permanently. Which lowers faith. That makes sense. Have to see what that is. Oh, whoops. That didn't go. I think so as well. We've been streaming for about an hour and a half. Um, thanks everybody so much for joining us yet again. There is a whole slew of new content in the game that we haven't been able to get to in our playthrough uh, today. But, um, rest assured that we're going to be keeping up with developments. Um, again, like I said, if you want a sense of what we're going to be working on in the following weeks, take a look at the update that was posted today on Kickstarter and um, uh, our community forums. Um, inspect a lot of cool stuff. Um... I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna throw a little party. Uh, where's war? Oh. oh, that crashes the game. Sweet. Anyway, yeah, expect us to be doing a lot more work uh, these coming weeks. We have some really cool plans specifically. I'm just gonna tease it a little bit here to work on uh, the loop of gathering resources and going uh, to the sacrament. I'm making that like a little bit more interesting than what you saw here today. Uh, some new systems for that. So look forward to that uh, in addition to, you know, more content, more places for you to explore on the world map, uh, more challenges to fight, relics to collect, um, and things like that, and god levels to gain and such. Hmm? <laughs> and, uh, and also, in a month, <laughs> in a month, the game is launching on early access, um, and we'll be... Uh, Basically squashing a ton of bugs before then as well. That's the, the final two weeks before launch. So we hope you guys are looking forward to that. We certainly are. And we're looking forward even more to continuing development after the early access launch and keeping you folks up to date on that as well. And, you know, uh, using your input to determine where we're going to go from there on. Thank you all so much. If you're a backer, thanks again for backing. If you're not, thanks for checking this out. We hope you enjoyed checking out Godhood, and we hope you'll be checking out Godhood in a month when it launches 
on Steam and good old games in early access. For Yoni and me, bye everybody. <laughs>